So next, I want to give an update because there's more information coming out on COVID-19 and follow up what we talked about on Monday because the evidence is just does not support at all this massive economic shutdown that has ruined people. It's ruined people's mental health. It's ruined jobs. It's ruined companies, businesses. And from the very beginning, I said we shouldn't do it. From the very beginning, I said, let's take those that are in danger, actually in danger, which is very small. And you can see now from the data, it's even smaller than we thought. Protect those people and let's move forward. So on Monday, we heard from Dr. Scott Atlas. He was talking about some of the data that has come in. And here's what he said. In fact, 50% of people that are infected have zero symptoms. And then another large percentage have nothing really significant that demands any medical care and certainly not hospitalization. So when you look at the newer data that has come out, the estimates are that the fatality rate is very low, maybe 0.1%. A 0.1% mortality rate. Come on, folks. That's the flu. Here's more. When you take the people who are going to die, two-thirds of people from, this is New York data, two-thirds of people are over 70. 95% of people are over 50. If you're young and healthy, you have essentially zero, near zero chance of dying. Well, that part differs from the flu because with the flu, the next next at-risk group after the elderly are children. And COVID-19 doesn't seem to affect them statistically at all. They're essentially immune to this. And here's more from Atlas. Like uh, 99.2%, today's data of all those investigated for underlying conditions, 99.2% had yeah. some underlying condition. So 95% of the people who have died are over 50, and 99% of the, actually over 99% of those who died, have other serious health conditions. We're talking hypertension, diabetes, obesity, heart disease. 99% of those who died had some of those. In addition to COVID-19, however, it affects you, if at all, okay? So that's the data from Scott Atlas, and he was talking about antibody testing that's being done in New York. This is where this information is coming from, and now there is even more. Antibody tests in other parts of the country, including California and Kansas, have found that the mortality rate for the novel coronavirus may be as low as the seasonal flus at roughly 0.1%. These numbers are a far cry from initial projections that had the mortality rate at around 2 or 3%, and Atlas says that the new data means it's time to end the shutdown. Atlas's fellow Stanford professor and medical expert, John Inidis, has made similar comments, projecting that the actual death rate for the coronavirus is one per every 100,000 people infected, which would put the mortality rate at almost exactly the same as the seasonal flu. Ionidas has also made note of extremely low death rates among young and healthy people. So what about the economic shutdown? Because of the coronavirus being as it is, what about that? Should that have even been done? Here's more. Ionidas and other like-minded thinkers have also argued that shutdowns and stay-at-home orders have been an overreaction that have not saved lives. While some doctors, including leading White House Coronavirus Task Force advisors Anthony Fauci and Deborah Birx, have repeatedly stated that staying home saves lives, there remains a startling lack of evidence that this is actually true. It's just maddening, folks. It's absolutely maddening that we have shut down our economy for something that is no worse than the seasonal flu, something that children and young people are basically immune to. Over 50% will not even feel it. 80 to 85 percent will have no or mild symptoms, and 99 percent of those who die have other factors. The hypertension, the obesity, the diabetes, the heart disease, all those factors. It's just outrageous to think that this is why we shut down the economy. And here's another note. I want to get into this as well. This, there's the other side of the, the coin here. There's the side that says, Should we have reacted this way? Should we have shut down the economy for something that is basically just another flu? The other side of it is doctors that are coming out to say that this system is being manipulated by those in power to not only the media hype, but the power, the left hype to make this worse than it is, to hype it so that 
We continue this shutdown. We continue this dependency on government. Dr. Daniel Erickson came out with a video that went viral on YouTube to the point where YouTube took it down. They took it down because he was talking about how the lockdowns don't seem to matter. There's no evidence that supports that it helps when you compare it to eight states in the United States that never locked down at all, and they're doing just fine compared to the rest of the country. He also talks about the incentive that doctors were pushed to list coronavirus as a cause of death, all right? 99% of these people had other factors. You know, 25 years of smoking, the person comes in all messed up. They happen to have coronavirus, which doesn't affect most people at all, yet that's the cause of this person's death. He said that they were pushed to do this, and that's very, very disturbing. The other factor is how this has all been built to just establish this mindset that it's worse than it is. Remember, hospitals were told elective surgeries are banned. You can't do them. No elective surgeries. Well, that's a major cost source of revenue for hospitals. That revenue source thrown out the window. It's gone. It's done. Yet... Congress approved billions to give to hospitals to fight coronavirus. So they have an incentive to say that it's worse. They have an incentive to treat people with coronavirus that really doesn't affect hardly anybody at all statistically. That's what's going on. That's very disturbing. YouTube took off Daniel Erickson's video, and the CEO actually went on CNN and said that it violates their policies. Basically, if anybody speaks differently than what the WHO, the World Health Organization, says, that would be a violation of YouTube's policies. So they're banning dissent. That's what YouTube is doing. Banning dissent. We can't speak out. We can't look at data. This isn't conspiracy theories. Folks, you've followed this show. I've gone day to data. I'm an engineer by training. And so with a political background. So you can't help but look at the data. And the data shows that this... None of this reaction was, at, was necessary at all. All right, friends, I hope you enjoyed that quick hit. But before you go, there's more. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell so you'll be notified. Then check out the full show that this quick hit came from. And when you're done with that, here's another video just for you. Hope you enjoy it. Have a great day.